Last week, we did villains, so it only makes sense that this week we do heroes. In general, a hero is someone who plays with integrity, with honor, with loyalty, and is overall a genuinely good person. But I gotta be straight up, what makes a hero to me is extremely subjective. In a game about lying and deception, it's extremely hard to find 10 players that played with everything I just mentioned, like a real hero would. It just doesn't work like that, and if that's what I base it off of, then yeah, sure, I could potentially find 10 players for this list, but they'd all be a bunch of first and second boots because you don't make it far in the game preaching that kind of playstyle. It can work in Survivor, especially early seasons of Survivor, but Big Brother is different, so there's going to be a lot of judgment calls on this list. And I got a couple of hot takes, which I'm sure won't go over well with everybody, but that's to be expected on any top 10 list. In my eyes, a hero can play cutthroat at times, doing what they have to do, but they can go about it in a way that isn't villainous. I'll try and explain all my justifications for players when we get to them, but for now, let's take a look at some honorable mentions. Also, you know the drill. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because it really helps me out. I make new videos every Monday about Big Brother and sometimes other shows, so if you want a consistent source of useless reality TV knowledge, I'm your guy. Now, I had a much longer list of honorable mentions that I was going to go through, but because I have so much to talk about, I'm only going to mention the ones that were very close to making the list, but just missed out. These players are Jessica Hubanks, Shane Meany, Howard Overby, Johnny Mack, Natalie Negrati, Claire Rufus, and Derek X. No matter what time of day it is, no matter where I am, and no matter what I'm doing. Lady Tiffany is using the porcelain throw. I'm done with this. So, with the honorable mentions out of the way, let's start things off with a bang. At the number 10 spot, I have the guy in the thumbnail, Tyler Crispin from Big Brother 20 and Big Brother All Stars 2. I'm conflicted. Very much so. Not only do I feel that Tyler saved modern Big Brother, but I feel like Tyler is one of the only S-tier caliber players that I would consider to be on the heroic side of things. He would play the game hard, of course, and he would lie, but it was never malicious, and it truly felt good-natured. There was a reason that everyone had a final two deal with Tyler, and that's because he comes across as a genuinely great guy and someone you would want to work with. In All Stars 2, it really dawned on Tyler that all the sneaking and conniving didn't sit well with him, and that he was not happy with the way that he was playing, even though he knew it to be the successful way. And that sort of hesitancy to play deceptive shows that Tyler is not a villainous person in the game, and his struggle to battle his morality, to me, shines him in a heroic light. He also handled losing the game both times with extreme maturity and grace, and you could tell that when he lost in Big Brother 20, and when he was evicted in Big Brother 22, that there was no bad blood, and Tyler gave everyone a hug with a huge smile on his face. But there's a reason that Tyler is this low on the list, and it's the elephant in the room. It has to do with when Tyler tried to quit in All Stars 2 and insinuated that one reason he wanted to do so was to help support Bailey and Devon moving forward and stand for Black Lives Matter, only for him to ultimately be talked out of it by production in Christmas. I understand Tyler's desperation in that moment of just wanting to go home, and I believe that Tyler did have good intentions to start out. I feel like he was really missing home, and since it was the last week before jury started, he realized that he could potentially get himself evicted and get to see Angela, and in the process do what he felt was right by giving Devon and Bailey a real shot of continuing on in the game and fighting for Black Lives Matter. Because the feed shut off when production and Christmas talked to Tyler, we will never know what truly went down there and if production threatened to take Tyler's 40k stipend away if he left, so I'm not letting that affect this. However, I will say that Tyler not informing Bailey and Devon that he was no longer going to go with that plan and waiting for them to learn their fate at the veto ceremony was not the best look for Tyler. So I will dock him a few points there. Without that incident, I'd probably have Tyler higher, but I mean, come on, the dude is so likable, I can't not put him on here. He made a mistake, yes, and I'm not defending how Tyler handled the situation as a whole, but everyone makes mistakes, and Tyler has roughly 160 other days in the house where his good-natured self was shown. He's a top-tier player who showed that you can be one of the greatest of all time while still being a good guy, and even through pulling moves on so many house guests, he remained in the good graces of nearly everyone because of his personality. So overall, I think it is fair to place him at number 10 on this list. Yo, how are you gonna put all these gorgeous girls in this house? I'm trying to win some money. Haley's pretty hot. Angela's pretty hot. Bailey's really hot too. I'd give them out the mouth to any of these girls if they need it. Sink water swag. Oh yeah, fix that hair, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hair, boy. I like what I see. Oh man. I wanna talk to you at some point. I was hoping you'd be open. But I think we can kill it. Deals, 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 deals. Here we go. I think we can do something really incredible. We can make it work. I know, man. We really can. Offering them up. Two for one deals. I'm in. 
So I made this for myself. No, I don't want it. But it looks it. No. so good. And I, I know I, you're no, no, in no, no, pain. no, no. I don't want it. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. <laughs> we have to live with Christmas after this, Zingvot. Shut up. Oh, okay. You guys are all going to pay for that comment. <laughs> So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to talk about it. Yeah, I felt I felt so bad, and I felt like I was the reason, but that was that was genuine. Oh. It still is, and I'm sorry it worked out that way. Okay. I forgive you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing from Tyler and knowing that he was sincere and it did come from a genuine place made me feel a lot better about the entire situation. So I'm glad I know where his heart was in that moment now. Realistically, any of the honorable mentions could have gone at the number 9 spot, but I ultimately decided to go with Helen Kim from Big Brother 15. In a season full of hatred, racism, homophobia, fighting, and overall a lot of negativity, Helen was one of the lone bright spots. Just by reading her initial bio on CBS.com, you could already tell that Helen was a truly caring person. She was a game player too, but never took the bad route. She would play strategically and it worked out well for her as she gained a lot of power and control in the early game, but she never used intimidation or other tactics to get her way. She gained her power from being a trustworthy bright spot in the house and used that to further her position. Helen is a good example of being someone who is more than willing to play the game, but does it in a way where they don't come across as evil, and they're just doing what they have to do. Unfortunately, production must not have been a fan of her gameplay, which is maybe why they decided to push her in the Battle Back competition. <laughs> you did a great job. I just feel like I just wasn't cut out for this. I don't think anybody, Alyssa, is cut out for this. I'm glad that I have somebody in this house that can just be compassionate when I've felt so down. <sighs> I need to check in with Gina Marie to make sure my allies are safe. Congratulations, Helen. Yes. You are the new head of household. Aaron, hand over the key to the HOH room. OK, let's do a crazy dance. Crazy dance! We have come up with all this stuff about Judd that in our minds, Judd was the player to take down. And unfortunately for Judd, maybe he's not any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. At the number eight spot, we have Tiffany Mitchell from Big Brother 23. And I'm aware that many won't agree with Tiffany's placement in the top 10, but hear me out. Inside the house, Tiffany had built strong, genuine relationships with basically every single house guest. And although there were game implications behind most of those, the bonds were real and it was shown that Tiffany truly did care for basically every single one. That's great and a step in the right direction for being labeled as a more heroic player, but obviously isn't enough to put you in the top 10. What Tiffany did that made me put her on this list was her throwing away her game in order to further push the goal of the cookout. In stories and fairy tales, what makes a character a hero is their willingness to sacrifice everything for what they believe in, for the greater good. And in this season of Big Brother, in this story, Tiffany could have had it all. Being in the best position in the house, she could have taken a different road to make her chances of winning more definite. But instead, she chose to sacrifice her positioning and therefore her chances of winning for what she believed in. She gave this up to guarantee that Big Brother would crown its first black winner, and I personally find that heroic. She did it for the cause, for the movement, and although I typically find giving up your game for someone else to be a bit, eh, like Clay in Big Brother 17, this is an exception to that rule, because this wasn't throwing away your game for someone that you liked. This was for every black person that watches Big Brother. In a time where it could not be more relevant, Tiffany threw away her once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win Big Brother, a game that she very clearly loves for what she believed in, and I find that extremely extremely noble. Again, I know not everyone will agree with the reasoning, and I understand that, but unfortunately for those that disagree with me, this is my list, and for me, I see Tiffany as a hero. Also, I'm extremely biased and I love Tiffany, so that may have something to do with it, but hey, it's just my viewpoint at the end of the day. F13. Congratulations, Tiffany! You have won the wild card competition! Tiffany toes, baby! Tiffany toes! Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I you thought it should be, a, be snake. a snake. Come no, here. she is not. Like Who is a rooster, Frenchie? You. Y'all. <laughs> like... I am a unicorn. Get my <laughs> right. Are Tiffany you... could be like a squid. A squid. <laughs> Claire, Sarah Beth, and I said that. <laughs> I don't want anyone to think that's in this house that our connections aren't real, that our relationships aren't real, that our bonds aren't real. I've been wanting to play. I know you have. You wanted to take risks in this game, but we couldn't because there was just so much yeah. at stake. I mean, there's a... 
we definitely have accomplished a lot. Getting the six of us here, moving as covertly as we did, is the greatest accomplishment. Without Tiffany and her master plan, I'm not sure if we could have made it this far. At the number seven spot, we have Ian Terry from Big Brother 14 and Big Brother All-Stars 2. Ian Terry is a hero without even trying. It's just the type of person that he is. He loves the game of Big Brother and he plays it with his heart. Ian's loyalty to his alliances in Big Brother 14 showed a lot about his character, which was shown by his consistent desire to work with the Quack Pack, his words of comfort to Brittany after she was nominated by Frank, and him sticking to his word and bringing Dan to the end when he got the chance. Although Ian showed he was willing to lie, it never felt malicious, and he did it to advance his game and the game of those that he was working with. Ian also showed he wasn't afraid to stick up for himself when Frank verbally attacked him, which showed a lot of character growth from the young kid. Then on Ian's return in All Stars 2, Ian took being evicted in the aftermath of his exit with the most grace I have ever seen from anyone, ever. Overall, Ian is a great representative to show that the good guys can pull off a win, and I believe he is one of Big Brother's best heroes. I can uh, kick myself in the face. I had a bad first few days here. I was really nervous. Anything that helps them see the fun side of me definitely helps me stay in this game longer. I want to have a, like a slop date with Ashley, perhaps, something like that. You know, something fun. Oh, a terrible person. No, you're not, man. For what? What did you do? I did that. Dude, that looked like someone who wanted to win the game for me. I'm the biggest idiot. No, you're not. Don't say that about yourself. Congratulations, Ian. You are the winner of Big Brother. Ian and Dan. They're from Ian. Yeah, he literally never stops with his Dirk Superman or whatever the hell he is. <laughs> tell you, ladies, he looks even better in person than with that superhero outfit. It's weird being back here. <laughs> At the number six spot, we have Jordan Lloyd from Big Brother 11 and Big Brother 13. Jordan Lloyd is the epitome of the nice girl. She won because of her likability. Not only was she a real sweetheart, but she wasn't afraid to stick up for both herself and her showman to Jeff when Russell would antagonize them and pick arguments. There really was nothing evil about her, it seemed, and we saw something similar on her return in Big Brother 13. I wish I had more to say about her, but Jordan's personality is basically what puts her on this list. She was very caring, very sweet, and at the final four of season 13, when she was up on the block against Rachel, Jordan went to her and basically told her, hey, Rachel, don't give up, you can still do this, while she was on the block next to her. This gave Rachel the push she needed to get back up and eventually go on to win the game, which did result in Jordan's eviction, but as someone who had already won the game, I can look past the obvious gameplay mistake and see the true friendship and kindness that Jordan displayed, and to me, she has no reason to not be considered a hero. Jordan, you want to get married? Yeah, Jeff. We're engaged. <laughs> you better buy me a cute ring. Cute ring? One of us better win this competition. <laughs> <laughs> I want a square cut diamond, okay? And you better put a lot of thought into it. You know what I mean? Lately, Jeff has been really stressed out and he's been kind of snappy with me. I guess he thinks that I'm not pulling my weight. I don't like this Jeff. I like the other Jeff. Natalie was trying to distract me when she brought up Michelle liking Jeff. It wasn't working because Michelle's happily married, like whatever. Cause I know he likes me, so <laughs> I have nothing to worry about. Correct answer is 51. Congratulations, Jordan. You're the final head of Elsa. Congratulations, Jordan. but I hope they do tell me if they're gonna evict me because I bought an eviction dress and I would be so mad if I wear something else and then I do get evicted and I don't get to wear that dress. I'll take it. Yes. Oh, oh wait. No, 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 you're okay. You're do you want it? You know, I do have Jeff here and you know, Shelly doesn't have anybody. Any phone call from home when you haven't seen your family is definitely worth it. So you take it for Jordan gave up the most precious thing in her life, her family, for me, and uh, I can't believe it. I mean, I appreciate it so much, and I'll never forget what Jordan did. 
the hero with probably the biggest uphill battle ever, at the number 5 spot, we have Victor Arroyo from Big Brother 18. Initially starting off the game immune, his attempts to get out the veterans were foiled, and he was backdoored by Pauly in week 2. Victor then won three duels in a row to win his way back into the house, where he then started to become a hero. He was funny, a seemingly good guy to be around, and was straight up in the game, rarely lying and honestly playing with a lot of honor. Even though Pauly backdoored him in the pre-jury, when Victor won HOH in week 8, he nominated the now villainous Pauly straight up and gave him the opportunity to save himself in the veto, which is a level of respect that he was not shown earlier in the game. Then, Victor won the veto and sent Pauly home before being turned on by Natalie and being evicted for a second time, just for him to win another battle back and re-enter the game. Victor soon won HOH again and sent home Natalie, getting his respectful of revenge once again before ultimately being evicted for the third and final time the following week. Overall, Victor played a straightforward and honorable upward battle throughout the entirety of Big Brother 18, and I feel that he played as heroically as he could, even in the face of constant betrayal by those he thought he could trust, and for that reason, he lands on this list. So I'm hanging there in front of the frog's face, and I cannot fathom why these two pieces aren't connecting. And I lean back a little bit, and I'm like, I freaking spelled BB Electric Festival wrong. <laughs> Electric Festival. <sighs> I'm so stupid. Congratulations, yeah! Victor. You yeah! have won the Battle Back competition yeah! and will re-enter yeah! the game. Yeah! Yes, 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 uh, that's mine. I won. Good job, Vic. Woo! They voted me out a couple weeks ago, and I come back. I win HOH back to back. They can't stop El Fit Vic. Woo! Woo! I'm not, no, I'm not I'm mad. Not, I, don't, I just don't know why I'm me, not mad. Like, what, what did I do to you, brother? Look, that was voted out by everybody in this house, except him. Dude, okay. the, pill is, the pill is swallowed. On week two, I that's was fine. evicted out of the house. And I had to fight my way me, back If you want to call me on that, that's cool. I can forgive, but I can't forget. It's my strategy. strategy. Did I do this to you when you put me up? No, I'm not mad at you. Okay, okay, then don't do it to me. I trusted the group. Some plans don't work out. That one didn't work out for you. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Oh, who has ever come back twice after being evicted? Nobody but this guy. Making history. Your boy is unevictable. But I'm just kidding. All honesty, I love you guys. If you don't want me out, I'll beat every single one of you. <laughs> and I'll have $500,000 oh, in my yeah. pocket. Last but not least, Paul, you're like my brother, and I love you, man. Love you, buddy. At the number 4 spot, we have Jason Guy from Big Brother 3. Jason Guy is the original nice guy, the original hero, potentially one of the most likable house guests to ever play the game, and for good reason. In a season where the jury loved Lisa and was not a fan of the strategically dominant gameplay style of Danielle and Jason, Jason still had a great shot of beating Lisa in a jury vote because he was just that likable. He was pure, one of the best social players of the season, and was unwaveringly loyal to his number one, being the only person to vote for Danielle in the final two. Jason Guy is one of those people that you can just tell is a hero, which makes the dynamic of the Jason-Danielle duo one of the most interesting in the show's history, as I have Danielle as a top 10 villain. None of this is to say that Jason wasn't above playing the game. He ruthlessly evicted Marcellus at the final five and did what he needed to do to get to the end, but he did it in a way that didn't feel malicious, and overall, it's rare to see someone perform as well as Jason did while still coming across as such a good guy. For being the OG and for everything I just stated, I feel that Jason is one of the best heroes in all of Big Brother. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have together. Jason has this sensitivity about him. He offered to help clean the bathroom. I think he's just a deer. All of Mobile is watching and supporting you. <laughs> this is the most awesome thing ever, you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Jason's playing the game. If they think he's not playing the game, then they're stupid. He is not a threat to me at all. Absolutely not a threat to me. If Jason were scheming everybody, then uh, he deserves the Oscar for the next five years. We're gonna be the last two. My Dan Dan's probably calling my, my family going, so he's living in that house with three girls? I kind of find myself in some GT sessions, girl talk, and some things that I just don't need to know about. I could find some other guy and hang out and do something manly like lift weights in the backyard or spit. I'm a squirmer and a fidgeter. You know, at least there, there is still some question in somebody's mind.
Now, at the number three spot from Big Brother 21, we have Jackson Mickey. The reason that Jackson is such a top tier hero is because, no, I'm just kidding. I'll stop messing with you. The real hero from Big Brother 21 is Ovi Kabir. Although he wasn't in the house long, it didn't take long for everyone watching to realize that Ovi was a true hero. Not only was he just a swell fella, as shown by him baking cookies for everyone in the house, he was a loyal friend. After being evicted in the first week because he was just too likable, he got to stay in the house due to the camp comeback twist, which meant that Ovi was there when the Undeniable Alliance was bullying Nicole up in the HOA room, talking smack and ostracizing her. With basically the nine most powerful players in the game talking badly about Nicole, it would seem a bit intimidating to stand up to them, but Ovi went straight upstairs and stood up for his friend, telling them that it was not cool at all what they were doing. It would have been so easy for Ovi to just let it happen and stay out of it, but he went out of his way to stand up for his friend who was hurt, and that's what a real hero does. So, even though Ovi was in the game for just a few short weeks, it was more than enough time for him to show that he was one of the purest individuals to play the game, and easily is a top three hero in my eyes. Girl, my hands are I don't think I can hold it. You got it. As a Big Brother super fan, I have always dreamed about being on this hanging endurance competition and throwing it. No need to get on anybody's radar right now. Oh. Hey, protect your game, Ovi. What's he doing? I think he's gonna try to go in, but I don't think that'll go over well. Ovi, no! Ovi, no! Like, Ovi, you gotta Ovi, wait a minute, on. bud. I don't think Camp Comeback really cares about coming in here. No, it doesn't matter. It's like, we're having we a conversation. Yeah, no, I just don't think it's cool for y'all to do that to Nicole. No, I'm just saying that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I don't think it's really nice. That's all. At the number two spot, we have everyone's favorite pre-juror, Kaser from Big Brother 6, Big Brother All-Stars, and Big Brother All-Stars 2. Kaser came into the game to be a role model and try to change the public perception of Iraqi people and Muslims, as during the time, there was a lot of animosity and biases towards people that looked like Kaser due to the ongoing Iraq war. Outside of just being a super amazing person, Kaser was probably one of the most loyal house guests to ever play the game. He played for the good, fighting for what he believed in, and was the type of person who would defend his alliance until the very end. And we saw him go home time and time again because he wouldn't stand down. Because of his leadership qualities and commanding drive, he was often the first person to have a shot taken against him on his side because he truly was the head of the good guys. He was honorable, showed lots of integrity in the game, but was also just such a badass, delivering such iconic one-liners like, no, I sealed your partner's fate. Ah, it's just so good. Time and time again, Kaser has shown to use his time in the Big Brother house to praise good throughout the world, using the platform to promote Black Lives Matter and other social causes, as well as being there for Ian when he opened up about his autism. Kaser was also the people's hero on Big Brother All-Stars 2, being one of the only people to stand up to the rest of the house and to call the Mega Alliance out for playing scared and not at all how All-Stars should. He may come across as too intense at times in the Big Brother house, but it's because he plays with his heart fully and will not stand aside when he could be fighting hard for himself and his allies. Kaser is intense playstyle ended up being his downfall every time he played, but I'll be damned if Kaser is not one of, if not the, greatest hero the show has ever seen. In terms of Kaser's character, he very well should be at the number one spot, and realistically, it's basically a tie between him and my number one. What goes on here in the Big Brother house can very much contradict what it is to be Muslim. There's a lot of deceit and backstabbing. It's important for me to win while maintaining my integrity. War is a treacherous thing. People are dying. It's not a fireworks show. And I think I need to prove that point. I need to show that there is a human face. And that's part of the reason I'm here. You, Mikey, this is you. <laughs> you. I will definitely avenge his eviction. But I'm not going to focus on vengeance because there's still a game to be played. It gives me the chills because things are working out perfectly. And I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. I truly believe you that it's not personal. It's not. But you know the game just got really nasty. I'm not naive. I know exactly what's going on. I told myself, I get HYH, I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. That's what I did. Early on. You're not the target. You were the date. So you sealed my feet. No. I sealed your partner's feet. I just want to say I really love every one of you guys on a personal level. Uh, now, when it comes to gameplay and strategy, I think you guys all suck. If you want to have a reunion and sit around and maybe play charades, then keep things the same. If you want to play All-Stars, then keep me here. We'll continue to play. <sighs>
And here we are, perhaps the most likable, rootable, and heroic player to ever play the game. Donnie Thompson from Big Brother 16 couldn't land any lower than number one. He was such an underdog, and he was so likable to the point where his fellow house guests thought he must be hiding something, because there is no way that someone who was as pure and innocent as Donnie was wasn't hiding something. Whenever a friend was in need, Donnie was there to help out. When Jocasta was on the block and became too sick to compete, Donnie went out and won the veto for her. What makes Donnie a perfect hero is his ability to constantly foil the plans of the Mega Alliance. Three times they tried to send Donnie home, and Donnie won the veto twice, and then won the Battle of the Block by himself the other time. There was nothing evil about Donnie. He was a noble, honorable fighter, and it didn't go unnoticed by the fans, as he received a record-breaking 5.2 million votes to be America's favorite house guest. Donnie's heroic nature was so highly regarded in the house that I truly believe he would have beaten anybody in the final two, but I may be getting ahead of myself there. Regardless, Donnie is the hero we all wish we could be, and easily, easily lands at the number one spot. It's y'all that's making me cry. My friends, it sure ain't winning no game or losing no game. It's that people cares for me and it touches my heart and it makes me cry. And it's just a good feeling. Oh man. Hey, Jocasta, somebody's not going home. <laughs> Jocasta's not going home this week. <laughs> it's okay, it's good. don't cry. Winning this veto for Jocasta today means the world to me. Uh, maybe now she can rest tonight. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Hayden has found his second, but Donnie is just seconds away from... Congratulations, Donnie! You have won the power of veto! I will keep the veto <laughs> on myself. <laughs> I guess that's up for the showmance, guys. It's gonna be a great night. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's have a cookie party. You guys down? Donnie, you down? I'm down for some cookies. <laughs> you can't trust me! Uh, right, we you. can, it's just me and you. But don't cry. Hey. We're gonna go out with our heads hanging high, okay? We're gonna have our heads hanging high. I am so tickled that I just won the Battle of the Block, but I have my suspicions. My partner didn't find any bones, and I even handed her a bone to her hand. My feelings are hurt deeply. With more than five million votes, the clear winner is Donnie! Congratulations, Donnie! And there we go. This was not easy. I know I had a few hot takes in there, but I hope that I did a good enough job justifying why I put certain house guests on this list. It's easy to want to be a hero on Big Brother, but once you put pen to paper, it turns out to be much more difficult than you'd think. And to succeed as a hero? Almost impossible. But that didn't stop these players from playing how they did, and I appreciate each and every one of them for the light that they have brought to the show. If you're more of a villain lover, though, make sure to go check out my Top 10 Villains video. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And, as always, Here's a clip for you on your way out. You can't have sex. What? Jedi's don't have sex. Jedi's don't have sex. He told yeah, yeah, you tell Anakin that. Yeah, but he went to the dark side. If it came between my Jedi art and having to make love to a woman, I could write to the dark side. <laughs>